Hmm. This is interesting. So there are, uh, I guess there was a bunch of um, rich black people who got together to try to buy BET. So it sounds like Tyler Perry, 50 Cent, Shaquille O'Neal, and Diddy got together to try to um, buy BET, which also included VH1 and a couple of other like black um, like media outlets. Now, um, Paramount Plus wanted to sell this entertainment bundle for $3 billion. But it sounds like Tyler Perry and the gang were only willing to pay $2 billion. And Paramount basically said, well, in order to like secure our balance sheet, so to the, when they crunched the numbers, like the bare minimum that they could ask for was $3 billion. So um, I kind of feel like between Diddy, Shaq, 50 Cent, and Tyler Perry, they could have come up with the money, but it would have been like all of their net worth, like all of their money. Um, and I don't know, I, and so when you kind of read this article, Tyler Perry was basically saying, I think that's a little bit too much. And I don't like, I don't actually know if it's a good purchase. Like it doesn't feel like it actually is. And let me just explain to you why this is the case. So, um, independent content creators like you and I on platforms like youtube it sounds like other people are going to platforms like well there's women who are literally going to platforms like only fans girls people are using tiktok um there's all of these platforms that like especially like black creators all over the world are using to like tell stories a big part of those um media outlets okay like bet specifically um, is the fact that they have these scripted TV shows that are based on storylines. A lot of the time, those sh- times, those shows are coming from stories that people in the writer's room are familiar with of things that have happened in the real world, right? Like, And then they have a, a higher budget, more creative writers, other ways to like use cinema and like imagery to kind of like shoot and tell this story so that you as the consumer can just like sit back and like watch it, right? But now when you when you have things like TikTok and you have things like Instagram stories and all of these other ways to kind of like use media to tell stories, it's actually not really that interesting to like sit down and watch BET. Like be serious. Like who actually has a television in their home anymore? Like most of us who are interested in like who live in the real world actually use like YouTube to consume content. A lot of us are using the streaming platforms, Hulu, um, HBO Max, like the most popular TV shows for, I feel like, mostly like black educated people are on HBO. They're like um, Issa Rae's content uh, chain, right? Like all the cool black shows right now are all on HBO. So even like the fresh, the Bel Air remix, uh, all of the stuff with Insecure and Hooray Media, um, all of the upcoming YouTube creators, right? All of the upcoming like actors or act- and actresses are on YouTube or they're on some platform where you can basically like watch them grow and develop nearly like every day, like every day. Um, so it isn't this thing where you, you no longer need to like go to LA and have this great audition. Like your entire Rolodex can be like your YouTube channel, like quite literally. And also, um, if it's not clear, like a lot of the YouTube creators that you see right now are actually scripting their own stories and their own lives and just sharing these videos with you for you to see, right? Like, so it's just that the work that was once distributed amongst like 30 or 40 people is now one person with just like their camera and their tripod and their microphone getting on here and telling you a story about how it happened. And maybe they'll include things like photographs or other, you know, multimedia content so that like you can see it. But that that is what's happening. Um. And I think especially as more black people um, who are interested in consuming content get on and, uh, you know, have more conversations really about like 
life and like themselves and like their perspectives and ideas, I think that we will see that the major networks, especially for black content creators, aren't going to be mainstream. It's not going to be um, YouTube proper or, or sorry, BET proper. It's going to be like YouTube. And I also think that it's very interesting to watch to watch what 50 Cent is doing with power. Um, it's incredible. Like, I've got to say, like, I've ne- I don't watch power. I think power would be trauma porn to me. I also don't watch Top Boy. I feel like that would also be trauma porn to me. But what I will say is that there are a lot of black and brown families who are watching TV shows like that. And I think that they are um, really just trying to understand uh, maybe like derogatory culture from other racial groups in order to improve their own... uh, cultural flaws Mm, yeah Hmm. 